My name is Diasha, and in our previous lesson we examined how water is treated, how soap is made and used, and you are given a fun recipe to experiment and make your own soap. I hope you managed. In our final lesson on acids and bases in this series, we will examine more applications of acids and bases at home. Now, how about something to eat and drink? Different food types contain a range of either acidic or basic substances. We will examine only a few examples, but why don't you carry out your own investigation of different samples of food to test if they contain acids or bases? Remember to record your results and present your findings as a report or oral to your class. Before we begin, let's have a quick look at our outcomes. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to plan an investigation to test the pH of different substances found at home, present your results to your class, and recognize that acids and bases play a useful role in our lives. To start with, let's get something to drink. Remember that all fizzy drinks contain carbonic acid, so it's not surprising that these drinks have a pH less than 7. But what about milk? Can you make a prediction whether it is acidic or basic? Well, let's have a look at what we know about acids and bases. Acids have a sharp sour taste. Bases are bitter. Now milk is neither sour nor bitter, but has a smooth texture. I don't think it is an acid, but is it a base? Did you know that the tongue has cells that detect different tastes? These sensory cells are called taste buds and are found in different regions of the tongue. So in a way, the tongue is also an indicator of pH. But we cannot use our tongues all the time so let's check our pH reading on the pH sensor. The pH of milk is 7,49, so it is therefore slightly basic. Did you know that it is traditional to drink sour milk in some cultures? The carbohydrate found in milk, lactose, changes to form lactic acid when milk turns sour. So if I test this milk which is turning sour, You will notice that the pH is 6,86. And Mars, which is sold in the shops, has a pH of 4,46. Now, even though lactic acid forms when milk goes sour, some acids actually preserve food and prevent it from going bad. These acids prevent oxygen reacting with the food and are called antioxidants. Let's go and watch an experiment John is busy with in the lab. Oh, hi, Diasha. Hi, everyone. Come and have a look at the experiment I've been conducting. I've been trying to find out what effect lemon juice has on a cut apple. I cut an apple, treated this half of the apple with some lemon juice, and let it be exposed to air for about 20 minutes. This half of the apple I didn't put any lemon juice on. Can you notice that it's gone brown? There's been a reaction with the air. This shows us that lemon juice is an antioxidant. Lemon juice contains two important acids, citric acid and ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is also called vitamin C. Did you know that during the voyages of discovery, many sailors and slaves died due to scurvy? This disease was prevented when sailors were given lemons to eat. Later, it was found that vitamin C prevents scurvy. Today, many people take vitamin C tablets to prevent getting colds and flu during winter. You can also get vitamin C by eating fresh fruit and vegetables. Now, vinegar is an acid used to preserve food. The pH of vinegar is about 2 and this is low enough to kill off all bacteria. So food can be pickled in vinegar to preserve it. I hope you understand that from these examples acids can in fact be useful. They can help keep food fresh and free of some bacteria. 
There are, however, acids that are not particularly useful. After eating a snack or a sugary treat, you need to know that the bacteria in your mouth feed themselves on the sugar. They convert the sugar to acid, which causes the pH of the mouth to fall. Saliva in the mouth is slightly basic and will neutralize the acid. This process is repeated every time you eat something. The effect of the acid on your teeth is not good, particularly when a sugary buildup is attached to your teeth. The acid secreted by the bacteria can now attack the enamel and cause it to corrode. If this is allowed to continue, a small hole develops in the enamel. This cavity can now increase and will become painful unless treated by a dentist. To prevent this, we can take a few precautions. Eat less sugary food and clean your teeth at least twice a day. Many different materials have been used to clean teeth. Some people used to use ash from a wood fire. Now we know that wood ash contains a base that will neutralize the acid. Using the guari bush as a toothbrush also helps remove food fragments and the deposit of plaque found in teeth. Now, modern toothpastes can be used to keep your teeth healthy. These toothpastes contain a weak base that will neutralize the acid found in the mouth and also give you fresh breath. Now, this gives me an idea for an investigation. Which method of keeping your teeth clean is most effective? Let's use scientific processes to answer this question. Firstly, Let's think of different methods people use to keep their teeth and mouths healthy. You can brainstorm this in groups or pairs. Now here is a list I have thought of. Toothpaste without whitening agent. Toothpaste with whitening agent. Mouthwash. Ash. Bicarbonate of soda. And sugar-free chewing gum. In order to simplify our task and to make an accurate comparison, let's choose only two different methods. I have chosen toothpaste and bicarbonate of soda. Next, I need a method to test the effectiveness of these methods. Let's monitor the pH of fluids from the mouth after eating a sweet and then after cleaning. We will do this by collecting a small sample of fluid and then use a universal indicator to establish the pH value. Here are the samples of fluid collected for the toothpaste test. Sample A before eating, sample B after eating a sour sweet, and sample C after brushing with a small sample of toothpaste. Now draw up a table and get ready to record the results. Here you can see that the universal indicator paper has changed color and we can read off the values of pH from the reference chart. Here's my table of results so far. In the second part of the experiment, I've used bicarbonate of soda. I've collected samples in the same way. The same person needs to be tested or else the test would not be fair. Again, I have collected three samples. Before eating the sweet, after eating the sweet, and after using bicarbonate of soda. Let's take a look at these results recorded in the table. I want you to analyze these results to determine which substance neutralized the acid in the mouth more effectively. Why don't you do this investigation for yourselves using other products? I suggest testing mouthwash, sugar-free chewing gum, different brands of toothpaste, and even ash. Remember to work carefully and record all your results in a table and be prepared to report back to your class on your investigations. This brings us to the end of this series on acids and bases. I hope you have enjoyed these lessons and that you now recognize how useful acids and bases are. In our next series, we will be looking at the reactions of acids and bases in more detail. So do join me then. Goodbye.